Good morning. Coming up on News 3 today, a Wayne County community is left with questions after police believe they found the body of a missing woman. Also, a day of fun soon turns scary for some theme park goers. Matt? And for today, we've got a cold front moving through that could lead to scattered showers and storms. The very latest is coming up. This is WSAB News 3 today. Good morning. It's Saturday, April 4th. I'm Raquel Rodriguez. Thank you for joining us on WSAV News 3 today. The search for a missing Wayne County woman leads to the discovery of a body in her car. That's this morning's top story. 73 year old Willie Jo Vaughn disappeared over a week ago. Authorities recovered her submerged car near a boat ramp on the Altamaha River in Jessup yesterday evening, and there was a body inside. Police say the tip came from a fisherman. Meanwhile, two people close to Vaughn are behind bars, though the Wayne County Sheriff's Office say they are not suspects at this time. Vaughn's daughter, Eugenia Shell, has been charged with making false statements and aggravated stalking after deputies say she violated a protection order her mother filed. Shell's boyfriend, Christopher Pierce, is also charged with making false statements to police. The Wayne County Sheriff's Office tells us the body will be taken to the GBI crime lab for positive identification and to determine a cause of death. A Port Wentworth man who tried to blame a shooting on his girlfriend will be headed to court. Police tell us the alleged victim, Matthew Akumara, told police his girlfriend shot him at their home on Holly Springs Circle Thursday night. But police say he shot himself. He's been charged with nine different crimes, from false statements to reckless conduct. He's scheduled to appear in court April 8th. And Metro Police are looking for a suspect accused of shooting a 16-year-old boy during a robbery attempt Wednesday night. Officers say Anthony Crawford was shot by another teen who tried to steal his bicycle. He's expected to survive. Now, police are looking for 17-year-old Jamari Cartledge. We're told he lives in the 1200 block of East 39th Street, near where that shooting took place. Anyone with information on Cartledge's whereabouts is asked to call Crime Stoppers at 912-234-2020. And turning now to weather, here's a live look at downtown Savannah, courtesy of Savannah Camps. A nice place to be during the weekend, but will the weather hold? Let's head over to Storm Team 3 meteorologist Matt Devitt to find out. Matt? Yeah, Raquel, we do have about a 40 to 50 percent chance for scattered showers, even a few isolated thunderstorms over the next several hours. Current temperature is 66 degrees, and the cloud cover that you are looking at is ahead of a cold front right now moving across South Carolina into Georgia. It has over the past hour or two moved through Macon. The winds have changed, but zooming into our northern counties, that is where we do have the rain coming in from the west, moving east. No lightning has been detected, but if anything, more of a nuisance for Screven County all the way into Hampton County, some light to moderate rain. Current temperatures, it is a mild Saturday morning, 64 in Bluffton, 65 for Tybee out towards the west, well above average, as you can imagine. 65 for Hinesville, 64 in Jessup. High temperatures later on today in the mid 70s. Rain chances 40 to 50 percent. Scattered showers, maybe even a few isolated thunderstorms. Once the front moves through, winds breezy at times could be as mild as 79 and as cool as 71 along the coast. Raquel. All right, thank you, Matt. Well, a $47,000 do-over. We found out that's the cost to the city to solve the ongoing saga of the fountain at Forsyth Park. Earlier this month, work began to demolish the fountain, which opened a few years ago as part of the renovation of the Banshell and Fort area. But the city says children were getting inside part of the fountain and could have been injured. Now, as you can see from video we took yesterday, the demolition is almost complete. A spray pool will now be installed. The work is costing an additional $47,500. But you could use $47,000 for something else, right? Or we could use $47,000 for a fence that would have kept people out. So I think really, you know, letting the public in, getting it interactive, I think that's really a great direction for the city to go in. The city says no new funds per se are being requested. The demolition and installation of a new spray fountain are expected to be completed by the end of April. A South Carolina sailor missing at sea for 66 days is alive and well. 37-year-old Lewis Jordan was lost at sea after his sailboat capsized, leaving him drifting far from shore. Reported missing on January 29th, Jordan set out for a fishing trip when the Coast Guard says his sailboat's mast broke and his electronic gear was damaged during rough weather. But on Thursday, after more than two months at sea with a broken shoulder, his fortunes changed. 
A German-flagged vessel rescued Jordan about 200 miles east of North Carolina's Cape Hatteras. When I was running out of water, drinking a pint a day for a very long time, rationing that water, almost out, almost out. Finally, God answered my prayer right before I ran out of water. Jordan says he managed to survive by catching fish with his bare hands and eating it raw and trapping rainwater. In national news, a Bluebell ice cream plant in Oklahoma is shutting down voluntarily. It's been connected to a foodborne illness linked to the deaths of three people. Last month, the company and health officials said a three-ounce cup of ice cream contaminated with listeria was traced to this plant in Broken Arrow. Bluebell says it will make any necessary improvements and eventually reopen the plant. Meanwhile, opening day at one of the country's most popular theme parks turned out to be more of a thrill than parkgoers were expecting. At about 4 p.m. yesterday, Six Flags St. Louis lost power to many of its rides and attractions, leaving some riders stranded. It took about 30 minutes for park workers to safely remove everyone from rides, and no one was injured. It was pretty scary, I mean, just because, especially when you're up there for five minutes, then 10, and then 20, and you call and you can't get through to anybody, it was just a little bit much. For their trouble, Six Flags operators are giving everyone who was impacted a free pass to the park today. And a two-year-old black lab is lucky to be alive after getting shot in the head with an arrow. Gemma has a scar but is doing just fine now. Earlier this week, authorities in Michigan say she was found wandering around with an arrow through her head. A construction worker saw her and called animal control authorities. Authorities say the dog's owner is the one who fired the arrow after Gemma became aggressive toward another dog. The arrow penetrated just above her left eye and came out the roof of her mouth. Millimeters between her brain and her optic nerve. So just by absolute millimeters, she missed everything important. So she won't lose eyesight. She has no brain damage. It was just amazing. The dog's owner has not been charged with any crime. Animal control officers hope the owner will sign off on the dog so they can find her a new home. While the Georgia Senate passes a bill that would punish people who hurt or kill dogs, horses, and other animals used in the line of duty by law enforcement agencies. The bill was approved this week in a 43 to 6 vote. Offenders could be fined as much as $20,000 and jailed for up to five years. And in Atlanta, a six-year-old starts a fundraising effort for a special friend, a four-year-old police dog who needed a bulletproof vest. Matt Pearl has the story. Well, we're gonna do it. Kaden Kelly is six years old. Canine Kira is four in human years. Does she know how to say? Friday afternoon marked the climactic moment. When she nudges your hand like that. She wants you to rub her. In an unlikely friendship, sealed mm -hmm. with a kiss. Oh, good girl. <laughs> A friendship that began in Caden's karate class. Uh, they have to do three community service projects prior to their black belt. Caden Kelly uh, had this great idea that he wanted to raise money for a canine police dog. But when they reached out to Johns Creek PD, they learned a canine's bulletproof vest requires a four-figure sum. We were worried that we could, if we could raise that amount of money. But again, I think that when you involve kids and dogs and such a good project, I think it took off. What happened next? Here's Kaden. Uh, lots of people and my mommy raised lots of money. $2,400. Enough for a custom fitted vest for Kaden's new pal. And this is Kaden Kelly. And this is Kira. Kira. The vest will serve Kira in the field. Thank you very much for doing this. The star of okay. this day. Come on. Come on. That unlikely friendship sealed with. Yeah. You guessed it. Oh, <laughs> Very cute. Well, up next on WSAV News 3 today at 922, did you know it's best to buy some things in certain months? I'll tell you the best and worst buys to make in the month of April. You're watching WSAV News 3 today. We'll be right back. Welcome back to WSAV News 3 Today. In just a few hours, the River Street Art Fest will begin. It's happening on Savannah's historic River Street, and it starts at 10 a.m. Local and national artists will line the waterfront with their works of art on display for the last day. The fest wraps up tonight at 10, and one of the event coordinators tells us there's definitely a little bit of something out there for everyone. They can expect to see a lot of good art. Um, you stroll through, there's a lot of painting and sculptures, and there's some high-end jewelry and other things of that nature. And if you're ready
ready to hop into some Easter fun, there are some events going on in your area. In Richmond Hill, there will be a community egg hunt today at JF Gregory Park. This starts at 10.30 a.m. and there will also be food, entertainment, games and pictures with the Easter Bunny. And here in Savannah, kids can join the Easter Bunny for an egg hunt at Grayson Stadium. It's from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. There will also be bubble soccer and live music from local band Tell Scarlet. And you can find out more about this and other Easter activities in your area by searching for Easter egg hunts on WSAV.com. Well, it turns out the Easter Bunny brings big business to candy sellers. We're talking a few billion dollars in sales. Jack Thurston takes a closer look at findings from a new consumer survey. You gotta have chocolate rabbits. To Howard Longway, Easter is one of the sweetest days of the year. Easter ranks right there with Halloween as far as candy goes. You gotta do it and you gotta have a lot of it. He's certainly not alone. A National Retail Federation survey says Americans will spend about $2.2 billion this year on Easter candy, from just over $20 on average in the Midwest to nearly $25 in the Northeast. Bigger than Valentine's. Angela Emerson at Amara's Chocolate in Williston, Vermont, specializes in edible Easter gifts and decorations. She tells us the holiday is make or break for her because aside from Mother's Day and Father's Day, the next few months can be slow for chocolatiers. You have to budget what you get for Easter throughout the rest of the summer because there's a little bit of a dip. Cocoa prices have recently leveled off a bit. They shot up in 2014, market watchers say, because of new demand from Asia and because some traders feared Ebola would impact cocoa production in Africa. It really didn't. And there's some more good news for makers of all those chocolate bunnies. The price of sugar has come down. That's in large part because of the strength of the U.S. dollar. A market that's always changing. Julia Byrne Fields runs her family's 100-year-old fourth-generation company, Byrne Chocolates. It wholesales its rich truffles nationally, so is always watching the commodity markets. Makes you think about, you know, we're a small business in Vermont, how impactful global, you know, happenings are. And she says while ingredients may go up and down in price, one constant seems to be America's sweet tooth. The more sugar, the better. Now, Storm Team 3 weather, powered by Hard Gray Live Titan Radar. Yeah, I have to agree. Uh, the more sugar, the better. When I was a kid, I used to get those uh, jumbo bunnies. I would eat the whole thing in about an hour. Now, if you missed an awesome Tybee sunrise, I got you covered. Here's a time lapse over the past three hours. The sun coming up, the clouds coming in from the west, moving east, a mild start. The rain has not moved in just yet. Not all of us will see the rain later on today. The rain chance is at about 40 to 50%. So here is the current location. It has moved through Augusta. It has moved through Macon. It is going to continue to approach our area over the next several hours. The plan is because our air is converging and it is lifting, combine that with moisture, that could lead to some scattered showers, maybe even a few isolated thunderstorms later on this morning into the afternoon. For tonight, temperatures will drop as high pressure right now around Kansas and Nebraska moves east and our skies start to clear. 67 degrees is where we stand in Savannah, mid 60s for Hilton Head all the way towards Beaufort, just shy of 70 in Swainsboro, 64 in Jessup. But take a look at the power of this cold front, 71 degrees for Tallahassee, just a few miles, a few hundred miles north already into the 40s for Birmingham, Alabama, all the way towards Nashville, Tennessee, Atlanta. The temperature is dropping to 54 and 40s from Memphis all the way towards Little Rock. So for this afternoon, best rain chances will be during the early evening hours, 1 to 2 p.m. Rain chances 30 to 40 percent. But watch what happens by the late afternoon into the evening hours. The cold front moves through, drier air will work its way in, and the rain chances will lower to only 20 percent. So with our computer model hour by hour, you can see that the scattered showers will continue from 2 to even 3 p.m. and then wrapping up during the late afternoon, early evening hours. If you do have any Saturday evening plans, you're looking good. Bring the life jacket as those temperatures start to drop. So again, not all of us will see the rain. The rain chances at 40 to 50%. If you're wondering about severe weather, the chances are very low. Instability will be greater around the Georgia and Florida border. And as you saw with those rainfall totals, not very impressive either at or below a tenth of an inch of rain. Winds breezy at times, temperatures 
Very spring-like in the mid-70s around the low country of South Carolina. 73 for Hilton Head, 74 in Beaufort, upper 70s for Jessup all the way towards Waycross. Tybee, you will be at 71 for your Saturday afternoon. But quite a difference for tonight as the colder air moves in. 49 degrees when you factor in, factor in those north northeasterly winds at 5 to 10. It will make it feel even colder and it could be as chilly as 41 across our northern and western counties. If you do have any plans to take out the boat, my advice, do it during the late afternoon, early evening hours. That is your best window of time with the lowest rain chances as, as also the clouds start to break apart. For Easter Sunday, 71 degrees. We're going to start with mostly sunny skies, more cloud cover during the second half of the day. All in all, not a bad day. It will be quite breezy along the coast. For your Monday, as we start another week, mostly cloudy to overcast, kind of a gloomy day, and a disturbance in the atmosphere will spark a few scattered showers, even a few thunderstorms. Those rain chances at 40% with highs into the 70s. Well, some good weather then to hunt for all those Easter eggs. That's right. I may partake in some of that. Exactly. So we'll, that used to we'll be so see. much fun. Do you remember when you were a little kid oh, decorating yeah. the eggs with your parents? Now, see, I had the brother he, oh, who always used to hide them uh -huh. and then just take them off uh -huh. for himself. I'm like, hey, <laughs> That's I'll what save brothers me some. are for. Yeah, That's I what they do. I know. <laughs> Typical brother. Exactly. Typical brother. Well, thank you, Matt. Yep. All right. Well, South Carolina officials are highlighting the importance of organ donation. This month, the state's Donate Life organization honors organ recipients and those who give the life-saving gift. Experts say right now about 1,000 people in South Carolina need an organ transplant. Every 10 minutes, another person is added to the national transplant waiting list. For one man, organ donation helped him in the grieving process after his son was killed in a car crash. As a result of, of our decision, five people extended their lives and another person was able to see again. Uh, I have to tell you that that is the only silver lining that we found that day uh, in subsequent days. Filling sons, heart, kidneys, pancreas, liver, and corneas were recovered for transplantation. You can easily register to be a donor when you apply for or renew a state driver's license or ID card. In this morning's Consumer Report, looking for a bargain on everything from TVs to clothes. Money expert Stacy Johnson shows us this report. Every month there's shopping deals and duds out at the stores. And every month we turn to our partner Deal News for the best and worst buys. First on the April bargain list, TVs. Deal News says you can pick up a name brand 55 inch TV this month for around 500 bucks. Off brands can be had for as low as 250. Then there's spring clothing. Mid-season promotions could provide discounts of 15 to 50%. But if you want a screaming deal on clothing, Look for winter clothes, where you'll find discounts of as much as 80%. Want a super deal on just about everything you buy? You might want to head to Europe. Deal News says that Euro weakness is translating into hotel discounts of as much as 45%. And if you can't make it this month, don't worry. The Euro is likely to remain weak for some time to come. And one more deal to look for, free food, coffee, and desserts. They abound on tax day. Okay, there's some of your April deals. What about duds? Three things to avoid buying in April, tools, home appliances, and mattresses. That's because you'll find much better deals around Memorial Day when you can find discounts of 30 to 50%. Bottom line, shopping by the calendar does make sense because just about every month there are some deals that are good and some that aren't. Well, what's coming up on WSAD News 3 today? I have three words for you, Shark Tooth Fairy. We'll explain. And on the big screen about the only film a lot of people are talking about is this weekend's Fast and Furious 7. So we'll talk about it too after this short break. Welcome back to WSAV News 3 today. Well, prom season is almost here and for some, expenses will keep them out of the big dance. But a pair of Savannah businesses are teaming up to help some deserving high schoolers become bells at the ball. News 3's Martin Staunton introduces us to the prom fairy godmother. Kay Cantrell has been in business with her hair and nail salon for two years. The Savannah native says her dream of coming to the aid of girls in need for prom is due to her own life experience. I was in high school once. I'm a child of divorced parents and when my mother was single, um, she was pretty much taking care of us on her own with the help of my grandparents. So I got a job because 
there were things that I wanted mm -hmm. that we couldn't always afford. And going to prom and getting a dress was always so expensive. Cantrell says September's loft and city market was more than open to the idea of pitching in by donating some of the most expensive prom items. So the girls will get everything. Prom, dress, shoes, accessories, hair, makeup, there it'll be a full makeover. This prom night fairy godmother giveaway is in its first year. Recipients will be selected from nominations submitted online with short essays telling the story of deserving girls. Up to 10 will be selected. Cleary and Cantrell both say prom night should be a night to remember, not regret because of fiscal challenges. Prom is a huge deal. It's it's the thing. It's the it's what little girls dream about. Besides your wedding day, it's it's the only other opportunity you have to dress up in a beautiful gown, and just be and feel like a princess for a night. Prom is your first. It's like your first wedding. So, <laughs> so it is. It's, it's, it's as relative as that. There's the wedding, and then there's you know before the wedding there's prom. Right. So it, I mean it's. It's very important, whether you're going on a date with someone or not, just that time with your friends and being able to dress up and look beautiful and put on an expensive gown like Cinderella, it's just, it's a fairy tale. And up to 10 girls will be selected from online nominations. The deadline is May 8th. Winners will get full prom attire. Head to WSAV.com and search prom to find out how to enter. And speaking of fairies, the Lowcountry has a fairy of its own, and it looks as if the Shark Tooth Fairy will stay in business this summer. Lowcountry reporter Ashley Holland met the man for herself, and she's been following the story from our Hampton Lake newsroom in Bluffton, and she joins us live. And Ashley, what's next for the Shark Tooth Fairy? Good morning, Raquel. I caught up with Mike Harris this week. He's the man behind the fairy wings. What he does is dive for megalodon shark teeth and then hides them in the sands at Sands Beach in Port Royal for kids to hunt. Take a look at some of the bucketfuls of teeth he's found over time. But his trouble is, in early March, he learned the hunts could be in jeopardy because he needed to submit more detailed fossil reports to the South Carolina Institute of Archaeology and Anthropology. They wanted GPS locations and photos of many teeth he had already given away. Otherwise, they said he would lose his fossil license. But this morning, there is some good news there. He has submitted the reports, and the state admitted he did not need to send in exact GPS location details for each tooth. So it looks as if there's a lot more fun in store for kids in Port Royal this summer. Tonight, tonight on News 3 at 6 o'clock, we hear from the ferry himself, but surely his fans can rest easy and watch tonight at 6. Live in the Hampton Lake Newsroom in Bluffton, Ashley Holland, WSAV News 3. Very cool. I want one of those shark tooths. Well, it's a hundred mile an hour, hundred million dollar thrill ride. The Fast and the Furious opened 14 years ago and has gone on to become one of the most successful franchises in movie history. But the opening of Furious 7 this weekend is bittersweet for the cast after the death of star Paul Walker in 2013. Here's Raphael South with a look at the film in this week's box office preview. One last ride. Halfway through the filming of Furious 7, the fast car franchise came to a halt. Two to almost had you. When star Paul Walker was killed in a car crash, many questioned whether the show should go on. Co-star and friend Vin Diesel said fans gave the answer. When we were lost, when we were dumped on them, we were shocked by the tragedy. It was the audience saying, we'll ride with you. Yeah. So the ride that began in 2001 with the Fast and the Furious continued. The franchise has sped past the $2 billion mark worldwide, and Furious 7 may be the biggest hit of them all. It makes us all proud to know that we're working on something that people are still interested in. The staying power of these films goes beyond box office receipts. Cast member Michelle Rodriguez thinks it has more to do with race than racing. With all the races that we involve in one feature film where we actually get along, you know? Um, I think it's beautiful. Salute me, familia. Diesel says the character's familial bonds also rub off on fans and helps during the dark days after Walker's passing. What's better than having your audience feel as though they are your family and they are your support system? That support system is now lining up to see Paul Walker's final ride on the big screen. Just when you didn't think it could get any better. Raphael Seth, NBC News. 
State and film industry officials say the newly released movie Furious 7 had a major economic impact in Georgia. The Motion Picture Association of America says the film generated more than $47 million for Georgia's economy. This after hiring 7,500 production workers from the Peach State and building various interior sets along with exterior green screen sets in Norcross. And in 2013, the Bible miniseries became a runway hit, pulling in tens of millions of viewers. Tomorrow on Easter, NBC will begin airing a follow-up miniseries, A.D. The Bible Continues. It picks up where the last one left off, beginning with a crucifixion, crucifixion and resurrection and follows the events thereafter. The series premieres right here on WSAV tomorrow at 9 p.m. And today, dozens laced up their running shoes this morning, and it's all for a good cause. News 3's Courtney Cole joins us live from the Ronald McDonald Red Shoe Run in Savannah. And Courtney, what's it looking like out there? Raquel, let me tell you, there were at least 200 runners out here. They're finishing up behind me right now. They were flooding the area with red and white to raise money for the Ronald McDonald House. People were up bright and early, starting at 7 a.m. to come and register for this run. Runners of all ages, and even some parents with their strollers laced up their running or walking shoes, taking strides to raise money for the program. The Ronald McDonald House helps families who have children who are critically ill or injured and need medical treatment. Bill Soracek, the executive director of the Ronald McDonald House, says even if you didn't run today, there were plenty of fun things for you to do out here to show your support. We appreciate the community support, not only at this event, but year round. We're very fortunate that Savannah is a very philanthropic community, and we are able to do what we do every day, both by financial contributions and by volunteer opportunities. All money raised today will go towards helping the Ronald McDonald House right here on the Coastal Empire. Money will be used to create, find, and support programs that improve the health and well-being for children and families locally. Reporting live from Savannah, Courtney Cole, WSAV News 3. We'll be right back. Welcome back to WSAV News 3 today. Well, people in Tokyo experienced what the Japanese call a cherry blossom snowstorm. How beautiful is that? Cherry petals formed a carpet of flowers on the park's moat. The blossoms reached peak bloom only five days ago. Definitely something on my bucket list to see. Now here at home, our flowers are in bloom as well. Here's a live look at City Market. A couple of people are getting an early start to the day and heading out downtown, but will the rain get in our way? Let's head over to Storm Team 3 meteorologist Matt Devitt. Yeah, how about some good news? You know, the rain actually a little bit sluggish in comparison to what the computer models are showing. 66 degrees is where we stand. The humidity is up. Winds out of the southwest, and here is the very latest with our live Hargrave Titan 3 radar. At this point, it was thought that we might see a little bit more rain. Now, yes, we have it around parts of the low country, and I'll zoom in on that in just one second, but the showers are a little bit pesky. They're taking their bittersweet time to develop. The cold front right now has moved through Augusta and Macon. Zooming in, the showers are coming in from the west, moving east. Nothing too major, nothing I do not think we can handle. Light to moderate rain showers as we speak from Screven all the way into Hampton County. Current temperatures, it is a mild start as we approach 70 degrees for the airport all the way towards downtown. 66 degrees for Tybee, 65 in Bluffton, 66 for Hunter. Out towards the west, more of the same for Statesboro all the way towards Waycross. The forecast for today, scattered showers, temps in the 70s with winds, breezy at times. Raquel? All right, thank you, Matt. Well, the Wayne County community is left with questions after police believe they found the body of a missing woman. That's this morning's top story. 73-year-old Willie Jo Vaughn disappeared over a week ago. Authorities recovered her submerged car near a boat ramp on the Altamaha River in Jessup yesterday evening, and there was a body inside. The Wayne County Sheriff's offices tell us the body will be taken to the GBI crime lab for positive identification and to determine a cause of death. Meanwhile, a South Carolina sailor missing at sea for 66 days is alive and well. 37-year-old Lewis Jordan was lost at sea after his sailboat capsized, leaving him drifting far from shore. He was reported missing on January 29th. Jordan set out for a fishing trip when the Coast Guard says his sailboat's mast broke and his electronic gear was damaged. But on Thursday, after more than two months at sea, 
A German flag vessel rescued Jordan about 200 miles east of North Carolina's Cape Hatteras. And there are many furry friends looking for a good home. Today could be the day you find your perfect pet. Bourbon is a laid-back older gentleman. He loves cuddles, naps in the sunshine, and talking to you. The folks of the Humane Society says he is looking for a calm, quiet new home, possibly with a nice bookshelf or sunny window where he can perch. What a cutie. And if you'd like to adopt Bourbon, contact the Humane Society for Greater Savannah at humanesocietysavannah.org. And if you're thinking about adding a bunny to the family for Easter, you may want to rethink it. When people are given gifts, um, animals as gifts and things, um, animals tend to um, be neglected and not treated properly and end up in shelters. Allison from the Humane Society for Greater Savannah says rabbits should not be kept in cages all day. She also says they can be expensive due to the specific food and medical treatment they need. So maybe stick with chocolate bunnies instead. Up next, a story you'll love from WSAV's Southern Scene. A lot of love, commitment, and a great game of tennis. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, everyone deserves a chance to be the best he or she can be. And for some, that's not always easy. But recently, WSAV's The Southern Scene met a group of special athletes and the volunteers who helped them train, who are so passionate about tennis, they succeed on and off the court. Special Pop stands for Special Populations Tennis, and it is uh, adaptive tennis, and it's for intellectually challenged. Um, from high school age on up, our oldest is 60. Um, we have a great program here at the landings. I've been uh, with my husband in Atlanta. We worked for 20 years, um, and they have a huge Special Pops tennis program up there. So when we moved down here five years ago, uh, we started an adaptive tennis program. We started with five, and we now have uh, 47 um, that have registered. Tennis really, frankly, is an excuse to bring these folks together and socialize. Uh, the vast majority of them, I'd say about 70%, live in group homes, and they are not employable. Uh, they don't have a lot of social opportunities. So coming out here for a little exercise and so forth, and then socialization afterwards with snacks, gives them an opportunity to be within their peer group and feel very comfortable and not intimidated about playing tennis, learning the game, you know, like all of us, making mistakes, improving upon it, and so forth. So in a nutshell, that's it. And uh, it's been, for me, absolutely a, a, a great pleasure. More than whatever little we give, uh, we get back double. I think if you ask almost any volunteer, they'll say, we get more out of it than we give into it. And it's just, you have to feel it to appreciate what I'm saying, but the joy that they get from simply hitting a ball and they turn around to you and say, Coach, Coach, did you see me hit that ball? And the, the satisfaction and the smile, and then there's a million hugs. They just come up to you and say, Coach, I love you. It's amazing. That's what we get out of it. Well, they can go to our website, which is uh, uh, Special Pops Tennis slash Savannah and on uh, on our website you can see there my uh, email and phone number is listed so I'd love to chat with anybody um, because we're growing and we are the official site in Savannah. And our friend at the Southern Scene put that story together for us and you can see the Southern Scene weekdays at noon on WSAV and again weeknights at 7 p.m. on WSAV's digital channel MyLC. Well, another way to encourage a healthy start in your children is taking place today. The third annual Healthy Bodies, Healthy Minds extravaganza will be held at the New Blessings in a Book Bag Center on North Baum Street from 11 to 3 today. There will be free health screenings, healthy snacks, and live entertainment. This event is free and open to the public. Well, want something to do today? Stay with us, fun and games around the area, and find out if Mother Nature will put a damper on plans. We'll be right back.
Now, Storm Team 3 weather, powered by Hargrave Live Titan Radar. Well, a very good Saturday morning. Hope you're having a great start to the day. You know, yesterday, beautiful day. Temperatures well above average, 86 degrees in Savannah. Here's a time lapse around the Savannah River. A mix of sun and clouds, a pleasant Friday evening as that sun set overnight very quiet the cloud cover started to increase and that is exactly what we have at the moment a cold front is on the way and that is going to bump up our rain chances over the next several hours to 30 to 40 percent and we are already seeing that around parts of the low country of south carolina the moisture is there the air is converging it is lifting that is why we are seeing some of the light to moderate rain showers now the cold front has moved through Augusta, it has moved through Macon, it will move through across our area later on today. And then once that occurs, high pressure around Kansas and Nebraska all the way into Oklahoma will start to move east, and that is going to set up a very pleasant but chilly Sunday morning coming up. Current temperatures 67 degrees in Savannah, 66 for Hilton Head, already at 71 in Waycross, 66 in Alma, but there is that colder air across the northern half of the country. 20s and 30s, 22 degrees in International Falls, 30 in Green Bay, and at the freezing mark in Chicago. So the best rain chances for this afternoon will be between 1 to 3 p.m. And then notice how they lower during the late afternoon. The game plan is that the scattered showers, even a few isolated thunderstorms, will move through during the late morning, early afternoon. Uh, chances for severe weather will be low. Could see a few thunderstorms, but nothing too major. And then by the late afternoon, early evening hours, the rain chances will lower. The skies will start to clear and the cloud cover will break apart. I-16, I-95 looking mighty fine overnight as the temperatures start to drop. So again, to recap, the best chance of rain will be late morning, early afternoon. Town by town, 70s all across the board. 73 for Hilton Head, 75 in Hardyville, 76 for Hinesville, and upper 70s, just shy of 80 for Waycross all the way towards Brunswick. Bring the jacket for tonight, 49 degrees, but winds of 5 to 10 will make it feel even cooler as that drier air starts to filter in. My best time frame to give you for taking out that boat, do it during the late afternoon. That's when the rain chances should start to lower. Wave heights at 2 to 4 feet, and there actually is a small craft advisory later on during the night. Three-day forecast for Easter Sunday, good-looking day. A very, very slight chance of rain, only 10%. More clouds move in on Monday, 74 degrees, with a 40% chance for scattered showers and storms. Well, hopefully that rain moves quickly so people can enjoy yeah. their day. Get it out of here. Right. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Matt. Yep. Well, dozens of people are lacing up their running shoes this morning, and it's all for a good cause. News 3's Courtney Cole joins us live from the Ronald McDonald Red Shoe Run in Savannah on Waters Avenue. And Courtney, what's it looking like out there? Raquel, we got to thank Matt for holding off the rain. Right now, behind me, at least the last of the 200 runners are finishing up. They were flooding the area with red and white to raise money for the Ronald McDonald House here in the Coastal Empire. People were up bright and early this morning, early like us, as early as 7 o'clock to register for this run. Runners of all ages and even some parents out here with their strollers were lacing up their running or walking shoes, taking strides to raise money for the program. The Ronald McDonald House helps families who have children who are critically ill or injured and need medical treatment. Bill Soracek, the executive director of the Ronald McDonald House, says even if you weren't out running today, there was plenty of fun things out here to do, and as you can hear the music behind me, to keep you busy. There's a party atmosphere from start to finish. Sam's Club of Pooler cooking hamburgers and hot dogs and snacks and cake. Coca-Cola out in force with drinks and beverages for all our guests and families. Uh, Zumba being taught during the race while it's going on, so if you're not running, you still have stuff to do. All the money raised today will go right back to the Ronald McDonald House here at the Coastal Empire right behind me. And all the money will go towards creating, finding, and supporting programs to improve the health and well-being for children and families. Reporting live from Savannah, Courtney Cole, WSAV News 3. Thanks, Courtney. And in about 10 minutes, the River Street Art Festival will begin. It's happening on the historic River Street in Savannah. It begins at 10 a.m. 
Local and national artists will have their work on display along the riverfront for the last day. There will also be live music and even a comedy show. The fest wraps up tonight at 10. And if you're ready to hop into some Easter fun, there are some events going on in your area. In Richmond Hill, there will be a community egg hunt today at J.F. Gregory Park. This starts in about 30 minutes. There will also be food, entertainment, games, and pictures with the Easter Bunny. And here in Savannah, kids can join the Easter Bunny for an egg hunt at Grayson Stadium. It's from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And friends are using a day of music and craft beer to help one woman's fight with cancer. 33-year-old Maggie Metzler is battling uterine cancer for a second time. Newsreads Andrew James shows us from the newsroom on her latest battle and how you can help. Andrew? Yeah, Raquel, this event goes on from 2 until 7 today. Ramblin' Man Productions will host the Benefit Festival over on West Bay Street at Southbound Brewery. Live music, performances, food and drink. All those tickets will be around 20 bucks for all that. All benefits will go towards funding Maggie Metzler's fight against uterine cancer. This is the second time in less than a year she is fighting for her life. Now, Metzler moved to Savannah as a way of moving forward after beating cancer the first time around. Now she hopes the new community she calls home can rally to help her out. Raquel? Thank you, Andrew, and stay with us. A story that made WSAV reporter Ian Markle flip, literally flip. WSAV News 3 Today, we'll be right back. A new sport combining soccer, sumo wrestling, and bubble wrap is rolling through Savannah, but this new source of fun is helping improve the community as well. News 3's Ian Margul shows us how you can get involved. As we grow up, we have more responsibilities and more worry and more stress. Jump into one of these things and run on a field of 10 to 20 other people, you won't worry about any of those. Nathan Knight is the brains behind Battle Ball, the newest sport to take over Savannah. You're not supposed to be able to charge full speed at your opponent and come out unharmed. It's just how we're programmed to not allow to do. Battle Ball allows you to do things you've never done, been able to do before. Battle Ball is played just like soccer, but obviously with these bubble suits, it's a bit of a twist. Ugh. Players start like a dodgeball game, charging the ball at full speed. <laughs> then work with their team to score a goal with their feet, with a lot of extra physical contact to worry about. But Knight says while it is a blast, there's more to battle ball than just a good time. Every time that we bring it to the public, whether it's Daffin Park, um, we'll be in Statesboro next month, um, it was Forsyth last week, we do it and we connect it to a local cause. At their event at Forsyth, Knight and his team collected more than $400 in six bags of clothing for Savannah's homeless community, and they plan to deliver it all themselves. And I want to find out firsthand what it is they need. What do you need not only to make it through today and tomorrow, but what do you need to take you beyond your current state and hopefully progress? In Savannah, Ian Margle, WSAV News 3. Now, Matt here just said that he would dominate in that sort of oh, game. So oh, I, I would absolutely dominate. I mean, <laughs> first off, I'm twice the size of Ian, literally. And then I also, I played soccer for 10 years. All right. Well, these so. are some fighting words. I'm thinking we need to do a little oh. WSAV match. Oh, it's on. It's yeah. on, Ian. It, it, it is completely on. So, hey, if you're doing soccer, you're doing anything out there today, here's the weather. 75 degrees, scattered showers, even a few isolated thunderstorms. I think we got to get Raquel in one of those 79 degrees <laughs> inland 71 along the coast. Not all of us will see the rain. Keep that in mind for Easter Sunday. Only 10%. We're going to start sunny and then by later on in the day, a little bit more cloud cover. Seven day forecast 80s for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday into Friday scattered showers and thunderstorms. Yeah. So go check out a uh, bubble soccer. That's right. Looks like fun. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here for News 3 at 6. Until then, enjoy your weekend. Bye bye.